Many of you in the audience right now are saying, yeah, this is the dumbest comparison you guys have done yet, and you've done a lot of dumb comparisons, and that's really saying something. Aren't these basically the same motorcycle? You'd be forgiven for thinking such a thing, but today we're gonna dive in and find out what exactly the difference is between this XSR 900 over here owned by our camera person, Whitney, and this giveaway MT-09 we have in the shop. Stick around. <laughs> All right, we're diving right in today and we're gonna get these two motorcycles out on the road. But before we do, this is our giveaway MT-09. It's part of our intermediate bike giveaway sweepstakes. You can go to yamanubemerch.com, get a hat, get a t-shirt, whatever you want, get entered to win that way. Or you can go to yamanube.co, get signed up on our amazing Discord server, all kinds of cool benefits and perks and get entered to win this bike and plenty of others. Now let's get these two bikes out on the road and see how they feel. Alrighty, Spite, we're kicking this one off in motion here today. We just rode out here on opposite bikes. I was on the MT-09 and you were on the XSR 900. We're trying to determine if this bike is really just a aesthetic exercise, a little neo-retro flare thrown onto the MT-09. And what do you think jumping on the MT-09 after the XSR? The main thing that strikes me is how different these two motorcycles sit. And that's that's a really big deal that you know we're going to talk about later but the the way these motorcycles sit change the way that you sit on the bike and it changes the way that you want to ride the bike uh it, it makes a huge difference in your attitude you know this thing feels very aggressive very motardy and that one feels a lot more laid back it's one of the things that really kind of shocked me about the xsr 700 when we first had it back in the day was how long it felt and how much more like a cruiser or a UJM it sat as opposed to a sport bike. And you know, you get it on the side of the tire and it has sport bike-ish handling and it's not great, but you know, it's it's not really a cruiser under under the hood, but it kind of feels like one, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's my impression too, jumping on the XSR 900 here. The way this thing sits and even the shape of the gas tank and the shape of the seat, it really changes the riding style here as well. The bars are a little bit lower, a little bit wider. Uh, definitely feels more like a normal standard sport naked bike as opposed to the weird roadster motard thing that Yamaha has gone for in the MT-09. Um, the big thing to note here as well is uh, the throttle response on both machines are basically the same. But it's sort of. I don't know if it's just my brain playing tricks on me, but I feel like the XSR 900 feels just a teensy bit smoother than the MT-09, but it, it could just be my brain. What do you think? Honestly, they feel about the same. They, these bikes are rocking the same power plant. They are on basically the same frame. The subframe's same a little hardware, bit different. Same hardware, yeah. Everything's the same. But you know the, these bikes are so similar on paper which i think is why people think they're the same motorcycle you know yeah but, and i mean to your point they are same frame same engine but th there are subtle differences that do make them different yeah and so that that's one of the things that you you can't look at you know, a spec sheet and understand a motorcycle you got to go out and actually ride the thing and it helps if you can ride them back to back but yeah you know the, these are they're very different motorcycles in super subtle ways, but it's a drastic change in what the motorcycle wants you to do with it, you know? Yeah. I feel like on that motorcycle, popping a massive wheelie would be easy, but weird. On this thing, it's like, why is the front wheel down? You know, one thing we can say, though, is between these two bikes, and I think you'll agree with me, I'd rather be seen on the XSR 900 than the MT-09. It just feels yes. a little more grown up, a little more cool looking. I think you'll get a lot more head turns on this than the MT-09. What do you think? Absolutely. The MT-09 uh, is a very striking motorcycle, shall we say. Yes. Just as much like a Transformer as the MT-10 does, mm -hmm. you know? It's a very aggressive looking motorcycle. It looks like a sport bike. Um, you know, a normie would look at it and be like, oh, that thing's fast and you probably do a lot of reckless stuff on it. Whereas that, they're like, oh, you kind of just cruise to the office. Yeah, it's like, oh, you got like a cool cafe bike. And then you open up the throttle and you're like, holy moly, <laughs> this thing's got <laughs> balls. 
You know, for me, one of the differences as well is, um, you know, obviously, let's talk about this first, is the dash. So this has its own bespoke dash, this cool round setup here, similar to my Scrambler, actually. It's kind of a inverted look from what I have, and the MT-09's got that teeny tiny little LCD from like 2014, which thankfully they're changing for 2021 model year with the new Cyclops look that it's going to have. Mm. But, you know, just the feeling of sitting here and seeing this brushed aluminum tank and the dash, um, the levers that Whitney has chosen on here has also made a big difference. They feel really nice and slim and rounded. Uh, those little things make a big difference in riding. What would you say about that? Yeah, I, I, I hate these levers that are on this motorcycle. They're, they're, <laughs> as soon as I got on it for the very first time when it showed up in the shop, I, I saw the, the name on the brand and I was like, this guy got them straight from Amazon. I know exactly how they're going to feel because I have the same levers on my DRZ. They're going to feel like ass. And they really yeah. do. And that just, that just goes to show you need to spend a little bit of money if you're going to modify your motorcycle because this this don't feel very good and it feels like the kind of levers that somebody would put on their bike if they were stunting it one day and they dropped it yeah you they're know? basically just cheapo disposable levers so if you are wanting to keep your bike around for a long time get the nice levers do yourself a favor you know yeah it's something you touch literally all the time when you're on your bike so get the nice ones also any rider worth their salt will immediately be able to recognize that you have some cheapo levers on there and they're gonna laugh at you so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one thing that I love about this platform is that 847cc triple. It's just such a powerhouse of an engine. It's unbelievable how much power it makes. Yeah. It, it Seriously rapid motorcycle. It doesn't feel like, what, 115 and 69 foot-pounds of torque. It feels, it feels like, like 80 foot-pounds of torque. Yeah. yeah it literally it feels, feels like, like a liter bike. It's unbelievable. I've never felt an engine like this on any motorcycle that's this kind of wonky and rickety yeah you know? <laughs> which i guess is part of the charm of it because it's so um backyard build quality but so fast you know it has that kind of muscle bike character where you're not sure if the bike's going to get you there in one piece but man alive is it going to be exhilarating while you're trying yeah well and that's the thing for me as well the xsr it has a lot less of that rickety backyard feel that the MT-09 has, you know? The MT-09 mm -hmm. definitely has that kind of, you know, like everything just feels a little loose on it, you know? Mm -hmm. Whereas the XSR feels just a little bit tighter. And, yeah, I don't know. For me as well, the gas tank shape makes such a difference. Uh, I feel like I can place my knees here really well and really get a little bit aggressive with this motorcycle if I need to. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun to ride. Yeah, and you know, I, as a taller guy, I really like the MT-09's tank shape. I appreciate the fact that the cuts on it are so tall. It allows me to move around on this big flat seat and grab the shit out of it with my knees if I need to. Uh, you know, it really makes you want to grab and lean in, even though the suspension doesn't want you to do that at all. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's it's really not a um, it's not a confidence-inspiring ride, but it feels like it could be. Well, Splat, I feel like we've jibber-jabbered enough about the MT-09, the XSR900. I think it would be interesting if we got Whitney, the owner of this XSR900, to jump on the MT-09 and see how she feels in comparison to her daily ride. Let's do that. Alrighty, Whitney, we are now cruising on the XSR900 MT-09. I'm sure it feels weird watching your bike just rolling in front of you while you're on some lesser form of your own motorcycle. How are you feeling on that bike? Yeah, I feel like we're doing some sort of interdimensional uh, traveling right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, though? I was thinking that these bikes were going to be incredibly similar, but I'm already noticing big just body positioning differences. Right. If the seat feels lower, feels significantly lower. Um, uh -huh. I feel a little bit more relaxed. I don't know if you felt that. I'm yeah, assuming the MT-09 is a little more upright, a little more kind of, you know, yeah, the, the ergos are actually quite different. Yeah, your elbows are, you know, a lot more relaxed, more bent. You mm -hmm. get more out of them that way. Yeah, I've always laughed every time you guys um, kind of dumped on my bike. I'm like, <laughs> I always feel like that's saying your wife is too hot. 
What do you mean? Like, if you're saying a bike is too fast or it's too torquey, I'm like, so can your wife be too attractive? Like, <laughs> well, damn, Whitney, you don't got to roast me in spite on the channel like that. <laughs> but it's a question. Speed of... isn't everything. <laughs> Speed isn't everything. Your no, wife's that's... your wife's titties can be too big, Whitney. That is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny to take a corner and you're saying something funny and I just, you completely forget to do anything. <laughs> you're like, wait, can the titties be too big? Hold on, I gotta not. You're like, I, uh, I need to, I actually need to pull over and think about it. Hold on a yeah. sec. Um, but yeah, I was talking to Spite about it when we were out on our ride that one of the big differences between the XSR 900 and the MT-09 just comes down to the shape of the gas tank. Um, I feel like the gas tank on this is so different than the MT-09. It really causes you to change how you ride on it. What do you think? It does. Like, my knees are a little bit more up into it. Um, you almost have this secondary nature to kind of spread out your elbows from it, too. Mm -hmm. it kind of, It does disrupt the ergonomics a little bit. It seems kind of bulky for what it is versus nice slim take on tank on the XSR 900. Yeah, you were telling me before we uh, went out that this bike actually has the, the Acra on it, because um, we were confused. We are like, is this, is this stock? It doesn't sound stock, but um, I do think this is one of those bikes that it just absolutely deserves to have a, a, an exhaust on it. You can't have an MT-09 platform bike and not have an exhaust. No, it's one of the first things that's got to go. Because it's such a sewing machine if you don't actually change it. <laughs> So what else do you feel on the MT-09 versus the uh, XSR 900 here? I don't know if it has to do with age, but this one feels, it's probably more body positioning than anything, but it does feel a little bit more feather feathery in terms mm. of agility. Um, yeah, for me, one thing that I noticed that I actually like on the XSR versus that bike is it just has a sort of like heft to it. Everything feels a little heavier and more substantial. Even the, the clutch engagement, which I know is probably the exact same one, but because of the lever changes you've made here and the, the brushed aluminum gas tank, like, you know, your points of contact on the bike just feel a little more substantial, a little more grown up, a little more, you know, kind of refined. Yeah, I remember when I first got the XSR 900 and I was just getting into modern bikes again, it felt a little bit like a Bronco. It was something that I had to tame and kind of change how I rode, you know, especially, uh -huh. especially coming from s significantly smaller bikes. Yeah. Um, it was kind of fun that way just to um, up your skill level and, and be motivated that way by loving the aesthetics of the bike and the feel of the bike but then getting on it and being like oh jesus christ okay i gotta <laughs> i gotta get more seat time or uh, just more experience with it get the feel this one yeah yeah the mt09 i don't know it's a little bit easier i'm sure they tweaked you know they tweaked these things for a reason definitely what did you have before the xsr 900 i can't remember before that, it was a 1975 Suzuki GS750. Oh, yeah. Big difference. <laughs> what is it? You, you went ahead 40 years into the future or something <laughs> like that? Yeah, I was like, why would anybody ride a horse and buggy? Like, I don't get it. I mean, you're like, holy crap, these brakes are amazing. <laughs> the XSR 900 is a better looking motorcycle. No doubt about it. Without a doubt, the XSR 900's titties are huge and that's, enormous. That's why I bought it. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> like you see it in the showroom, and you just know that that's the one. Yeah, very handsome and attractive motorcycle. But you've got a new love affair with your uh, Sport Pillin 701. So, oh yeah, much. She's you know she's got a nice round behind and. When are you gonna get us, you're going to get us demonetized talking like that. <laughs> all right, so, all right, all right, I'll stop. we got to chill. All right, let's get back to the shop and let's wrap this up for today. Alrighty, guys, we're back here in the shop taking a closer look at these two motorcycles after getting a feel and riding impression out of them. And we thought we'd start it off with the most obvious comparison, and that's aesthetics. In spite, what's the first thing you are noticing that's different between these two bikes? Well, obviously, this is a neo-retro motorcycle, right? It looks like, you know, a cafe racer sort of thing. It doesn't have the clip-ons, but it has that style. And this is very much modern sport bike, angular muscles, mm -hmm. that sort of aggressive look to it. This is a lot softer, 
but it also feels a little bit more pulled together because of it. We have an actual like brushed metal outside of the gas tank. Mm -hmm, versus whereas plastic over here. All plastic construction. This seat is a lot nicer. It's got this like velour leather going on. Mm -hmm. And that's just seat. That's just seat. <laughs> And it's, it's really, you can tell that this motorcycle had a little bit more thought go into it. It feels, it feels like humans might have touched this, yeah. where that was all built by robots. Yeah, I think the other big difference for me is the headlights on this machine aren't as polarizing as the front headlights on this. This is a more classically styled bike that I think a lot more people could live with and be proud to show and own. I think this one, if you show someone, you might have to explain a little bit what it is. You know, they're maybe like, what's going on with that bike, you know? Mm -hmm. I think the dash too, big difference for me, obviously. This has that cool circular inverted LCD. This has the old TI-83 calculator looking dash over here, as you were familiar from your Supermoto. Yep. <laughs> I wish my Supermoto had a dash like that. I know, that would actually give you some features and stuff. <laughs> one of the things about this thing though is because it's styled this way it has this sort of brat seat it sits differently it does than this yeah. this doesn't have that super motard feel that this does mm -hmm. it's it's very much a laid back seating position even though this engine is not even close to laid back no there is no chill in this engine absolutely not and you'll notice too if you look on this uh, video that we're about to show you guys is the gas tank goes up higher here than it does over there and the seat goes lower here than it does over there so what you're doing is the gas tank is here and here on this bike gives you that kind of raised and kind of squatted look over that one that's a more standard kind of sport naked thing um, but I think we've dwelled on the aesthetics enough let's look at the nitty-gritty on the hardware on these two machines and see if there's any differences on those all right, guys, one of the big differences between these two motorcycles is the front end suspension. This MT-09, because of the 2019 and the more revised model, comes with front forks that have rebound and compression adjustability. Now, the XSR900 over here features the original FZ09 suspension where it only has compression adjustment on one leg of the fork, so you're not getting rebound adjustment on this thing. This is an inferior front suspension setup on this motorcycle, and it doesn't look like Yamaha is gonna change that anytime soon. The next biggest difference between these two motorcycles is the rear seat construction here. Now, this is what's normally considered a brat style seat. Yes, this does have a super aggressive tail tidy like what we did to the XSR 700 we had back in the day. Normally it has a big tail section down here with a big round headlight and stuff. But it is a stumpier tail that doesn't rise nearly as high. If we look at the MT-09 over here, this is a much more angular tail it looks a lot more like a sport bike and the seat is a lot more like a plank like something you might see on a dirt bike which again you're supposed to be able to move around on this seat it's a very aggressive style motorcycle whereas that brat seat is much more for just cruising around on. Back in 2014, when Yamaha came out with this motorcycle, they wanted $8,000 on the showroom floor for it, and that's pretty freaking cheap for a motorcycle with this amount of power. But seven years later, Yamaha's changed this thing and updated it a lot, and this thing cost you $9,399 on the showroom floor, which, how much is that one again? $9,499, a whole $100 hmm. more for basically the same motorcycle with a less sophisticated front end. But it is worth pointing out that later this year, the MT-09 SP is coming to America mm -hmm. for about $11,000. So, so another $1,000 is going to get you a bike with Olin suspension, really solid electronics, up down mm -hmm. quick shifter, all the goodies that you would want from a middleweight naked bike, which leaves this feeling a little underwhelming yeah. by comparison. On top of that, it's gonna have a new engine, TFT, a lot of new features. The question begs itself, is that gonna have the new 890cc engine as well, or is that gonna kind of be a weird relic of the past that Yamaha did for a little bit, who can say? My assumption would be that they will give this the new engine, but will they give it the MT-09 SP package? I don't see that world happening because then, you know, what's the point of having both SKUs be exactly the same? Exactly. So I feel like this motorcycle is gonna kind of find a weird spot where it is demonstrably inferior to a sportier motorcycle, giving mm -hmm. it a very niche customer. Yeah, and who do you think that customer is? Who do you think should get an XSR 900? This XSR is not for the person who really wants to be a hooligan. This, when you get on this motorcycle, it doesn't feel like it's egging you on to go faster, to pick the front wheel up. It really does have a more laid back 
nature about it, again, despite the engine being a fire-breathing 115 horsepower or whatever it is, mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy fast, but it doesn't feel like it makes you want to wring it out because of yeah. the way you sit on it, the way it looks. It feels more professional. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of motorcycle for somebody who's a little bit older, who wants a motorcycle that's still very potent, yeah. but doesn't look like a Bionicle. Yes, and this is for the coked out Bionicle squid who wants to do wheelies down the main strip of his town. That's the only person who should buy this bike, and you know who you are if you get an MT-09. You know you're about that life, you know you're a degenerate, you, you already know what you're about. I don't need to tell you who the target audience is for this bike. You guys already know what it is. It's the kind of people who would put a sticker like that on the motorcycle, am I right? Am I right? You feel me. So. That's gonna wrap it up for today. While these two motorcycles are very similar, they do warrant your further inspection if you're considering one or the other. Go and take a test ride on both of them. See how they feel because they are pretty different. We'll catch you on the next one. See you later. But as time went on. That is creaking like an old farm door. <laughs> Excuse me, hold on a sec. Get that energy Get up. Get this motherfucking energy up, all right. Ah, bummer for you, my little squid. This video is actually over. But lucky for you, there's plenty of other Yamu videos you can check out right over here. What's gonna happen to them? I don't know. I haven't seen them. But you can watch them right now.